Hey there, welcome to week eight of the American Defense Manufacturing Intro to Three Gun video series. All right, this is week number eight and we're gonna talk about your live fire and dry fire. Now, how we're gonna go about this is we're gonna do the, the, the dry fire drill first and then we're gonna uh, put it into live fire. All right, so we're gonna go back to back, dry fire for the drill, then live fire on the drill so that you can see it uh, in application. All right, so stick around. There's a few things we wanna discuss before we get started. Okay, first things first, eyes and ears, all right? So we're gonna be doing the live fire, and of course when you're doing live fire, you must have, need to have, want to have eye protection and ear protection, okay? So me personally, I love the Hunter's HD Gold uh, glasses. They're a huge supporter of the shooting sports, and they deserve your support. If you wear prescription lenses, don't worry. You can send them your prescription. They can create the lenses with your prescription as well. These things are great for low light or a super bright environment they they adapt to whichever uh light scenario you have i absolutely love these things ever since i got a pair a couple years ago it is all i have worn for shooting all right uh, so i highly suggest that you you uh take a look at the hunter's hd gold glasses and give them a try now ear protection or hearing protection so hearing protection whatever whatever works for you whether you use the the foamy roll-ups and plug them into your ears um, whether you use electronic over the ears, or just regular over the ears, whether you use the in-ear electronics like I have, I use the walkers. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you're protecting your hearing. All right. Even if you're hard of hearing like Mike Sexton, you still use hearing protection. All right. So make sure you've got eyes and ears at all time. Okay. So another thing that you're going to want to use now, <sighs> Everybody doesn't have access to a range with all kinds of steel and targetry and walls and barrels and, and everything, and, and I get that, right? So uh, what you wanna do is make the most of the room space that you have. So a couple of things that I use in almost all my, my um, live fire sessions and everything and my practice on the range are from MGM targets. There's two targets specifically that I love to use. And if you have to pack up and go to a range, that doesn't have a lot of steel or anything like that, but you're still allowed to shoot steel, but you have to bring it and set up yourself, or you're going to a buddy's house or maybe in your backyard, there's two pieces of steel, two things that I highly recommend from MGM target. Uh, one is the half size Ipsic. Um, we'll go up there in just a second. I'll show you that. And then the other is the MLS system from, them. all right. So follow me up there. Well, you're gonna just watch and I'm gonna walk up here. All right, so the half size Ipsic target's about 130 bucks or so. Comes in three parts. You've got the target itself, you've got the post, and then you've got the base. Super easy to pack up, take with you to whatever range you want, throw it in the back of the trunk, in the back of the truck. It doesn't matter, it's very portable, a lot of fun. Um, I'll even shoot that from 50 yards, 60 yards, 75 yards with my rifle as well. All right. The other thing that I like to use is the MLS system. Now, MGM does the MLS system in two different ways. They do one where you can buy it with a base. You can use a two by four and it comes with a little cap that has this hook on it. It has this hook on it right here. And then all you do is take your, your piece of steel from MGM, drop it in place. They've got uh, the IPSC A size. They've got the international IPSC A size with like the little bit more uh, diamond looking um a zone you can get a high size zig stick you can get full size bc zones to hang on them whatever you want personally i like to use the one with the t-post and i use the t-post and get the t-post mls hanger and then i put those on there i think the mls hanger for the t-post is like 20 bucks and to be honest the t-post is cheaper right now than a two by four so if you shoot your two by four and a half you've already saved money with uh going with the t-post setup so those are two things that i highly recommend i'll drop the link to those uh, down here in the, the, the video, um, in the comments and everything like that. So you'll be able to link directly to the MGM MLS series uh, target system and the half size Zip 6 steel targets. So I hope that they, they help you as much as they help me. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, um, we're gonna just work on the draw. Simple draw, shoot, draw, shoot, reholster, okay? Um, the, the main thing that you're working on here is not just your draw speed, but you're working on building the fundamentals. You're working on getting that good sight picture, sight alignment and trigger press right out of the draw, okay? Um, then you can add a second shot into it so that you can work on follow up and managing the recoil as well. But initially, we're just gonna work on the draw. So 
I've got my Tommy Gun six inch sight tracker here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off just like this. And I'm just, I've got the MGM half size zip stick, just some dry fire, a few wraps, get in position. And I'm just going through the reps here, all right? I'm just getting a few in before I put myself on the clock. And then I'll use my timer. Let me get it cut on. And I'll set my part time. Now I like to use the competition electronic uh, timers, the, the Pocket Pro 2s. You can use the CD 7000s and there's a couple other new ones out there that are all great. They do the job. Um, I just prefer the Pocket Pros, all right? So I'm gonna go through, I've got my part time set kinda very conservatively right now at a, a one and a half second for the draw. So I'll do that a few times. And of course, when I'm doing dry fire, I'm not just doing it a few times. I'm putting repetitions in. I'm trying to shoot 50, 60, 70 of this drill of repetitions, all right? All right, I'll reset. All right, now as I'm getting it out and I'm getting, I feel that I'm getting that good sight picture sight alignment right from the get go and I'm getting the good trigger press and um, I'm not pulling and yanking or jerking the trigger, then I'll bump my time down and I'll move my part time down to 1.4, 1.3. Right now I've got it at 1.3, so we'll go from there. All right, so I'm clearing that time and I'll do through this. All right, and I'll go through that until I get that dialed in. And I'm, I'm building on the fundamentals. If I do something wrong, I correct it there in the spot. I slow down, correct what I'm doing wrong, whether it's I'm not getting a good sight picture. Occasionally for me, when I draw, for some reason, I'll bring the gun up and down instead of getting it and pushing it out directly into my line of sight. So um, when I do that, even if it's during, during live fire, if it's during live fire, I'll drop the magazine, clear the gun, and I'll practice those repetitions. Just um, making sure I'm getting it out and pushing the gun out instead of getting it out and dropping it down into, into my line of sight. So make sure that you're not reinforcing bad habits. Start off slow, build the fundamentals, and then increase your speed. Uh, it's very easy to get sucked into how fast can you go. The problem with that is, is that usually leads to bad mechanics, to bad fundamentals. So build a rock solid foundation and then build your speed from there. All right, so I hope that one helps you. We'll go ahead and switch this over into live fire and then uh, do a few, few reps there and then we'll move on to the next drill. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. We're about 15 yards here. I've got it set at 1.3. All right, one, two, three. Ah, miss. I was worried about the time. Rounds in there. So 1.2, 1.25 was about what that was running for me. But you see, just slow down, focus on the mechanics. If you're starting to pick up misses, slow down, get the hits, call the shots, and then start to gradually speed back up. All right, hopefully that one helps you. Um, that drill helps you. Uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, so another part of the first drill is just to do a double tap. That way you're tracking the sights, you know that your sights are returning to the target for that second shot, uh, and that you're performing correct follow through. All right, so we're gonna do that and apply the, the correct follow through, make sure we're managing the recoil, getting the sight back onto to, um, the target and prepping the trigger for the next shot. So, same thing here, draw, Good sight picture, sight alignment, trigger press, manage the recoil, back on target, trigger prepped, and then the follow-up shot. All right. Not going super fast, just trying to get the hits. All right. Got two rounds left here. We'll do that one more time. 1.88 on that one. I'll try and speed it up a little bit more. Gun's clear. 1.61 on that one, a little bit faster. Got both the hits. So that's just another live fire drill that you can do off of the off of the dry fire drill. 
to help uh, manage the recoil and get your sights back on and prep the trigger. So add in a few more, more key uh, fundamentals with doing the same drill. All right, so let's go on to another drill. All right, so the next drill we're gonna do is actually not a drive fire drill. We're gonna go straight into another live fire drill. This is called 20 alpha. All right, so depending on how you do this drill, it can be about 100 rounds. The way that I do it, uh, when I'm running a full 20 alpha drill, I'll shoot 20 rounds from five different positions at 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 yards, and it's five round iterations. So what you have is you've got a paper IPSC target up there. I'll get it five yards, uh, timer goes off, draw one, two, three, four, five. The key is getting them excuse me getting them all in the alphas all right you're not wanting to drop an alpha and go to a charlie or delta or worse yet a mic pick up a mic so um you're wanting to focus on getting those alphas from five yards should be super easy from 10 yards still pretty easy at 15 20 and 25 yards you're really having to slow down your trigger cadence make sure you've got good sight picture sight alignment and trigger press all right um if you don't you're going to end up dropping dropping shots now when i first started shooting competitively I shot everything was three gun. If I shot USPSA, USPSA was simply practice for three gun. And what that meant is in three gun, it's two anywhere on target or one in the A zone. It's not like that in USPSA. That's how I shot USPSA, and that's why I have never had a good ranking because that's kind of how I've always treated it. But now my mindset is shifting, and I've realized that if I had treated USPSA seriously and gone for the alphas, not worried about the Charlies or Mikes, but simply focus on getting the alphas, the accuracy, I'd be a much better, much better pistol shooter today. So 20 alpha, um, what you're gonna do is five, 10, 15, 20 yards, uh, whatever you wanna do. Sometimes I come out here and I just do one run at 15 yards just to get warmed up. But timer will go off, you draw five rounds, reholster, walk up, check your hits. If all of them are in the alpha zone, speed up. All right, so if you run at 15 yards and you run a 3.8 and you've got all alphas, the next time you run it, the next next uh, next iteration, you're going to try and speed up and maybe push to a 3.5, a 3.6, something like that. Speed up the your draw, speed up your, your uh, splits, and try and get all alphas. If you get up there, got all alphas, speed it up some more. If you try and get to a 3-2 and you get up there and you've dropped an alpha or dropped two into Charlie's, a Charlie, a Delta, then you need to back up to 3.5, 3.6 where you had all alphas last and work on the consistency. Try and get that consistently where you're doing that repetitively for the first five, eight, ten runs that you do it. And then start to speed back up, all right, and try and get back to that 3.2 where you've got all alphas. So I'm just going to do this run real quick. Um, I'll do uh, two runs at, uh, at 15 yards and then i'll do a run at five yards so you can see from there as well all right now i'm gonna walk up check those alphas see if i got all alphas all right i have one alpha right outside the line there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna tape up that charlie All right, that was a 3.32. Hopefully if you missed, you know which shot you missed. I know that I missed my first shot. All right, I could call that from there. So I'm gonna run it again. All right, that time 3.47. So I, I backed my, my, uh, my cadence down just a little bit and took about 0.15 seconds off my total time. So let's see what I got now. All right, now I'm all alpha, so I'll try and do that to be consistent. All right, now like I said, I'll also do this drill at five yards where I can go a little bit faster. All alphas, there was nothing there to tape up first with a 1.88. All right, so uh, that's 20 alpha. That is going to help you a lot with your accuracy and your recoil management. All right, follow through 
how to how to properly get follow through getting that good sight picture sight alignment trigger press back onto the target with a good sight picture sight alignment and the trigger prep ready to go all right so 20 off is a great drill um it can be kind of a, a high round count drill if you do it a lot or if you do the whole thing at 5 10 15 20 25 yards or if you do four or five rotations at, at one at 15 yards or 20 yards um, so like I said, I, I usually keep it to a warm-up drill and every every few weeks I'll try and get back and do the full thing um, I keep track of my times as well so that I know what I was at and what I should be striving to improve on uh, So I recommend you do the same thing. Keep a log that uh, On this date at 5 10 15 20 25 yards. This was your time you dropped this many alphas on the first run I got all alphas on the second run, whatever the case may be all right, so hopefully that drill helps you as much as it is currently still helping me. Uh, let's move on to the next drill. All right, so the next drill, we're just going to do a simple reloading drill, okay? Um, reloading. One thing I want to point out, especially when you're doing reloading drills or using a magazine or whatever, make sure that you do not have any ammo, okay? Honestly, when you're doing reloading drills or when you're doing dry fire, there should be no ammo, no live ammunition anywhere, even in the room. Take it out of your bag. Don't have it in your gun. Don't have it in your magazines. Leave it out to the side. Leave it somewhere else um, because you are going to be upset if you're doing dry fire and you shoot a hole in your house or if you're living with your mom and dad and shoot a hole in their house, uh, they're going to be pretty upset with you. So uh, be cautious, be safe make sure you don't have any ammo anywhere in the room that way no accidents can happen so um what we're going to do here is just a simple reloading drill you're going to work on the draw getting that good sight picture sight alignment trigger press bringing the gun in to to reload mag eyeing that that mag well and seeing the reload all seeing the reload go all the way home and then back out on target for another shot all right now you can also add to this and do a double tap. You can work on that follow through at the same time. Depends on how much ammo you want to use when you're doing the live fire. All right, but for this, we'll just go ahead right here. And I've got my target just behind the camera here. But might help if I got a magazine in there to reload out of. All right, so, oh yeah, wait. <laughs> Pockets everywhere in these true spec pants. So <laughs> I can do this a couple times. So I'm just gonna go. All right, you can link them together like that and just do back-to-back -back reloads, or you can just do it one at a time. Draw, reload, get the sight picture, break the next shot, and then reset and do it again. All right, I reset it. All right. Make sure when you're doing, after you do that reload and you push back out that you're actually breaking the shot, all right? Um, I know that the trigger isn't reset at that point in time, but make sure that you're at least pressing against the trigger so that you Get into that habit for when you go to make your uh, in, in a competition or on the range. All right, so we did that. So we're gonna do the same thing here um, Do do the drill do it in live fire uh, And we're gonna do it a couple times with a single shot and then we're gonna do it a couple times with a double t double shot That way we work on that follow through at the same time. So I'm Three oh seven. Nothing crazy impressive. All right. And this time I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again, and then I'll do it with a double tap. Two ninety three. Sped it up just a little bit. This time we're gonna do the double tap. Ah, finish the drill, even when you mess it up. All right, so you can see there, 387 for that. Uh, we'll do it one more run, and then we'll move on to the next drill. All right. 356, so sped it up a little bit more. All right, so like I said, uh, you can do that a couple ways. The big thing is making sure that you're 
using the proper fundamentals, watching that mag go home so that you land it good and strong and then back out on target. All right. Um, make sure that you're getting that magazine seated as well. Uh, a little tip, I do not always, my reload mag is not topped completely full. I usually download it one round. So my mag, my MBX mags here will hold 23 rounds. I usually download it to 22. That way I've got a little bit of cushion. So when I seat at home, it'll actually seat in the gun. Um, I myself, and I've seen many other people do the reload, have it with a full mag or even with not a full mag, they just don't get it seated properly. Get back out to shoot and the, the, the magazine drops. So you don't want that to happen to you in the middle of the match because all you end up doing is either having to reload off the belt and re-rack another round or get down and pick up your magazine and put back in the gun. Either way, it costs you a lot more time on the clock. So uh, that's another drill. Let's get started into another one and talk a little bit about transitions. Something about transitions, something that I used to do, and of course I was doing this wrong, and uh, I had a couple buddies that have helped me. Uh, Joe Farewell uh, is one of the ones that helped me with this. Matt Martini, uh, JJ Ricasa taking his class. But moving your eyes, all right? So when you're doing transitions and you're driving the gun from one to the next, I used to take my eye, keep my eyes locked in on my sights and drive the gun with my eyes and my head and everything all together to the next target. Uh, I actually over would overdrive the target a lot because of that, because my eyes weren't picking up the target itself. Uh, so what you're actually wanting to do is you want the gun to follow your eyes. So if I'm out here and I'm shooting at this one, and I'm transitioning to a target over here, my head and my eyes are going to turn first, come in on target, and then I'm going to bring the gun and my sights into alignment with my, my line of eyesight and the target. Um, once I get that good sight picture sight alignment, I'm going to get a good trigger press and go for the hit so when you're doing transition drills make sure that that's what you're doing um, make sure that you're getting that good draw the good fundamentals on the first target that your eyes are leading the way to the second target and that the gun is falling behind all right so uh, dry fire just a few with this you can see my eyes move just a little bit ahead of the gun and it's allowing me to bring the gun directly on target without overdriving it, all right? All right, so do that a few times. And I'll do that both ways, not always left to right, but you need to practice going right to left as well. Uh, especially if you're, you're natural, if you naturally wanna shoot everything left to right, make sure you do it right to left as well. All right. Make sure you're not overdriving the target. Get your head snapped around. Let the gun follow your eyes, all right? So that's what you wanna do for uh, transitions. Did that, we're gonna do it a few times here. I've got two half size MGM F6 set up, still targets on opposite ends of the back of the bay there. All right, you can see it there, two and a quarter. Now I'm gonna go back the other direction. All right, 201 there. So um, that's the thing, my eyes are moving ahead of the gun, letting the sights drift in behind my, my eye sights and, and getting my line of sight lined up on the target and bringing the gun and the sights of the gun into that line of sight. Um, getting the good sight picture sight alignment trigger press. All right, so that's a little bit about transitions. Another thing we're gonna talk about with transitions, uh, it's not a dry fire drill. But, well, you can do this as a dry fire drill, but we're gonna go straight into live fire. And that's talking about attack versus controlled. All right, so an attack target is something that you can just natural, almost like point of aim, five to seven yards, draw, moving towards it, whatever, get on it and get on the trigger, and you know that you're getting all alphas. All right, there's no question in your mind, but up, you're there, okay? And then that's an attack target. Control target is going to be where you have to slow down a little bit, make sure you've got your sight, your good sight picture, sight alignment, get that good trigger press in order to get the hit. You're not going to be going just super fast and going at the same speed that you do on a five to seven yard target. All right. So what I've got is I've got a, a paper ipsic target over here that is uh, about five yards away. And then I've got the MLS uh a zone target from mgm sitting down there on one of the t posts and uh, that's going to be my control target so i'm going to draw put two fast ones on the paper 
transition over to the small one where I'm gonna have to slow down to get the hit. And hopefully I get the hit. So uh, let's do that drill and see how it goes. Now with this two differences between here, I'm gonna split the difference. I'm not gonna aim at this one and over here, I'm gonna kind of split the difference. So I've got the draw here and then the transition to that one. All right, you can hear that. So 226, 102 draw with a 18 split and a 106 transition. So and that was a dead hit there. So I'm starting to find that transition there and getting that good sight picture side alignment and trigger squeeze. Um, need to just re reinforce that, reinforce it. Uh, this is a three round drill for me. Uh, you can do double uh, tap down there and make it a four round drill. You can run it vice versa. And what that means is right now my draw is a 1.02. So let's switch it up and go the other direction and see the difference in that control. So like I said, the attack target draw, I know right there I'm on it two rounds and then um the transition over so with the control target it's going to take me a little bit more time to get that first shot shot off on the drill on the draw all right 217 got the hit with a 1.39 draw 0.61 transition so that that you can kind of see it kind of demonstrates a little bit for you of what the controlled versus the attack target is all right, con controlled, you've got to slow down, get the hit, attack, and speed up, get on the gas. All right, so hopefully that, that, uh, that drill helps you. Uh, it's helped me tremendously. Okay, one more drill we're going to talk about involves movement. Um, when I watch videos of myself, there's a few things that I notice consistently that I'm doing wrong that I need to try and work harder on and practice. All right, uh, one is speed. The only thing I'm going to do there is lose some weight, get some cardio in, do some footwork drills, things of that nature, which are entirely my plan, but we'll see how that, we'll see how that works out for me. It has not worked out thus far, but uh, never say never. Um, all I can do is put in the work. Um, but one thing that I can control when I get out here and practice that with uh, fairly easy is some of my other movement. A um, little bit of footwork, but specifically in this instance, what I'm talking about is my elevation changes. So uh, I've noticed that when I come into one shooting position, I can come in and I can be down like this shooting and then I stand up, bring the gun all the way in here and I turn to make the movements I need to make and then I come in low and then I stand back up and all I'm doing is eating up time. More movement equals more time. So uh, one of the things that I can do, um, got my empty mags, all right? So one of the things that I'm gonna do is when I draw and I've, I've got my good position, and I draw, I'm going to hit it and I'm going to turn and I'm going to stay low and stay down when I get into my next position. So one of the things that I'll do for, for a drill for that is I like to use the barricade. Uh, you do not have to have a barricade. You do not have to have walls or anything else. You can put two sticks on the ground and just move between the two sticks and just focus on staying down. Use your phone to record yourself so you can see what you're doing and get that feedback. All right. So you can watch it here. What I'm going to do is I'll start on one side. I've got two targets. One, I have to come a little bit to the outside and then all the way to the outside of the other. Uh, work on keeping the gun in position as I make those movements. Being able to drive it right back out into uh, my sight line and on target and getting in that good trigger press. Now, when I'm doing this drill, I will also throw reloads in in between stations. Either way, I stay low. I try not to change my elevation uh, to reduce the, the amount of movement that I'm doing and slowing myself down. So here we go. This is just a... Uh, what I'm doing if I'm on it, I got target there. I'm in position. And then I'm right there. But you see, I didn't raise back up to this. Now, if you watch the difference there with raising back up, you'll see what I'm talking about. So if I draw and I'm up here and I'm coming down here and then I'm standing up, you can see that I dropped down, came across, raised back up, I'm losing time, all right? So I'm gonna do that a couple times. I'll do it back and forth um, and I'll throw a mag reload in there as well. One more thing that I can work on while still staying down, still keeping my elevation uh, from going up and down. All right, so get it here if I'm doing dry fire. All right, staying low. This time I'll add in the mag, 
the mag change. All right, got to keep an eye out. I actually nudged the, bar the, the wall with my barrel here. So got to keep, uh, keep an eye out for that kind of stuff as well. Make sure that you don't jam into something and then squeeze off uh, around. Make sure you're staying safe that your finger's off the trigger when you're moving. You should not be moving with your finger on the trigger as you're coming across. A finger should come off, new trigger, and not go back on until you're doing your presentation and ready to break the next round. So like I said, we'll do this. See, this is what I was saying about cardio. Mine's horrible. I got a kid on the way Friday, which is two days from now. And uh, I don't see my opportunity for time getting much better uh, for me to do cardio, but I'm going to find it. It's not that we don't have time, it's that we don't make time. All right, so I'm going to do this drill live fire, do the same thing, and then uh, do it a couple times without the reload, and then I'll do it a couple times with the reload. All right. Again, remember, you've got to get the hits. It does you no good to do the drill and not get the hits. Make sure you're you're sticking to the fundamentals. Aha. All right, so now I'll do it a couple times with the reload. I'll do it from the other direction. All right. All right. So you can see, um, Couple things with movement. Did I go up? Did I change elevation at all? Uh, sometimes I don't always pick it up and I have to go back and look at the video to see. So uh, hopefully that helps you. Hopefully these drills help you with your draw, locking in the fundamentals, um, reloads, recall management, accuracy, a little bit of foot movement and transitions. Um, if you get any times for any of the drills, post them. Let people see what you're doing, see what other people are doing, help hold each other accountable. It's the best tool you have to make sure you're progressing is to have a, have a friend, have a buddy to help hold you accountable. Appreciate it. We'll see you in week nine.